Conservative MPs and Brexiteers like Nigel Farage in the last couple of days has blamed the closure of the steelworks on um, net zero hysteria or climate policy. How much truth is in that? None is a simple answer. Why is it that the Netherlands plant at Aymuden and Tata's operations elsewhere in the EU are not being affected and yet it's the UK's operations and particularly those in Wales that are taking the brunt of the redundancies? We've seen what's happened within the EU, we've seen what's happened in the UK, why the difference? Behind me is the largest steelworks in Britain and it's just announced that it's closing. For the last 24 hours, the entire British media have been here reporting. But if you watch their coverage, none of them are asking why it's closing, why it's happening. It's a significant moment in British manufacturing and no one's asking why. If you turn on GB News, if you turn on right wing commentators, if you listen to Tory MPs, they'll tell you it's because of net zero hysteria. So no one seems to know what's going on. But there's one person who does, Carwin Jones. He was the first minister of Wales from 2009 to 2018. He oversaw all of the transition period post Brexit. He oversaw the major meetings that happened at Tata. So this is the truth about why that plant has closed down. In 2016, there was certainly a change in terms of the UK government's uh, activity around Tata. Pre the Brexit referendum, they were very active. Uh, Sajid Javid and I went to uh, Mumbai. We talked to uh, to Tata, after the referendum, zero interest in the steel industry, and that, I'm afraid, has remained the case since. When you were First Minister, you would have been having conversations with people at the top of Tata, with government ministers, for, for years post-Brexit. How often do these concerns come up in those, in those meetings? If you're a business, you want certainty, first of all. You need to know that there is an agreement in place, whether you like it or not, at least it's there. And you know that you can shape your business accordingly. At the moment, because there are so many siren voices in the Conservative Party that are looking to shape Brexit in their own particular way, there's no certainty. Now, who is going to invest in the UK if they can't have certainty uh, for the future? And of course, Brexit has created all this uncertainty, then of course, magnified by the failures of successive governments in London to, to, to take a decision and stick to it in terms of our trading relationship with Europe. Why is it that the Netherlands plant at Aymuden and Tata's operations elsewhere in the EU are not being affected and yet it's the UK's operations and particularly those in Wales that are taking the brunt of the redundancies? You know, there is something there, a question there that I think needs to be addressed. Well, when you leave one of the world's biggest markets, it's inevitable that you will not have the same ability to export unless you put in place a series of arrangements that enable you to do as you did before. And that hasn't happened in the UK. And what's making it worse is that uh, businesses now are, are thinking, well, what happens if the Conservative Party takes a far more hard line view in terms of Brexit? What does that mean in terms of our business model? All that uncertainty makes the UK a more difficult place in which to invest. It is inevitable that if there are barriers put up between one market and another, that's not going to help uh, somebody selling into that second market. And that's what we've seen recently, of course. I think the uncertainty surrounding Brexit, the uncertainty in terms of the future, the civil war that's taking place inside the Conservative Party, all these things are factors that any business that's looking to export to the EU will take into account when deciding to invest in the UK. I think the, the, one of the problems is the UK government is not interested in the steel industry. If we see the responses that have been made over the past few days, they're nonchalant, they are uh, apathetic, I know, for example, that the current First Minister has said he's been trying to get a meeting with colleagues in London. That hasn't happened. They just seem to be sitting back and doing nothing. And I think people will judge them on that. Yes, they're not directly closing the plant, as Margaret Thatcher did with the mines, but they're sitting back and allowing this to happen. And people, I don't think, will accept that. Has anyone else from the mainstream media asked you these questions in the last 20 years? I think at the moment the focus has been on the immediate issues. So you're saying none of the journalists have asked you about what has caused this yet? No.